Hey, this is Ken Fallon, also known as the Voice of Wyndham, coming back again today as Tom and Jeff are out. Hopefully Tom makes it in. I hate to do this uh, without him, uh, but I'm sure we'll, we'll get through it. I am with my friend and uh, co-host for the evening, I think, Charles Pennywell, otherwise known as Chuck Pennywell from the Board of Finance. Welcome, Chuck. Oh, thank you, and thank you for inviting me on. Absolutely. We've got a lot to talk about tonight. Yeah, we're going to get to local issues and local politics in a minute. We're, we just want to take a minute to uh, just take a minute to reflect as a community on the lives lost today of the servicemen out in Cabal. It's just uh, it's horrific. We're not going to get into the politics of that at all, um, but uh, just take a second there and just think about what's going on and, and these, these families now who are suffering the loss of their sons and daughters um and then uh we'll just kick it right over to chuck and chuck what's on your mind locally well let's start with the stem school um it's been how long this i think that school is about six years now i believe it's six years old currently yeah, yeah. and we still have not gotten 4.1 i think it is million back from the state and i just learned last week that um we could lose up to one, two million dollars because of poor handling of the paperwork. I know they found a couple boxes in Kramer before they got destroyed, but that's not going to bring back all the money. Um, they're saying that there was work orders that were never turned over to the state. There were bids that were done improperly. I mean, this whole thing, the chairman, which I think was Mayor DeVivo, um, really did a lousy job. And the town is suffering. Not only we may get three million back, but I don't want to lose a million dollars. Right. I'm hearing. I, I hear the three million dollars. Uh, they have enough documentation to get three million back on that reimbursement, and uh, so a million and a half is blowing in the wind that I'm sure this community can ill afford to lose. And it does come. You know, as they always say, the buck stops with whoever the guy is in charge. And that guy was Tom DeVivo. He was the chairman of that building committee, and we have no idea where these uh, invoices are and uh, it's it's a shame because you can get all the politicians in town involved and try to you know rough neck the state department of education etc cetera, etc cetera, to get the money to us but if you're not I mean you know that that's a job that requires i think any job in the leadership position requires attention to detail and you know dotting your i's and crossing your t's it's it's not something to fool around with this is the public's money and the public trust and i think tom blew it and we would just join. We can keep going here, but... Uh, well, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I got thrown off track here. It's um, easy. <laughs> what also worries me is the um, new high school. Yes, we're going to get funded 95%, but are we going to do the paperwork on this properly? Do we have enough people in the school system and in the town to do all the paperwork? I mean, it's a shame that the that the uh, school board and uh, has refused help from um, the finance director. Um, he's well knowledge. I, I know there's been some bad blood, but he knows what he's talking about. I've worked with him. Um, do I agree with him 100%? Absolutely not. I don't agree with a lot of people 100%, but I trust a lot of things he's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> wow, was that the ghost of Tom White coming in? Uh -oh. It's Tom White. Well, I, did I say that out loud? <laughs> Welcome, Tom. Welcome. The Chuck gets along with people? <laughs> Everyone but a, but a missing cat. So I, I, I stepped in and I was just getting into the uh, piece there. I think you guys are talking about the reimbursements of uh, the right. school on Tucky Road, right? Right. Yes. So I do, I do agree with you that... If you're going to be the chairman and take credit for certain things, then you got to take the blows when the blows come. Um, and going back to what you just talked about with the high school, okay? Um, there's some rumors flying around that they can't do certain parts of that project because they don't have the paperwork exactly. to be put exactly. in to get the reimbursements and not signed off for the reimbursement, so they can't even do part of that project at this point. None of us are hearing any of that. Well, well it, hearing... it's out there, because I heard it's a, almost a year delay now yes. because of the paperwork. Again, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I just don't know what we, what we got going on. These building projects are huge, they're expensive, and they are an investment in the town. And I appreciate them if they're going to be successful and, and, and bring private enterprise in and, and, and people who just want to invest in the community again, fix up their homes. It's all for the good. But if we don't have the leadership at Town Hall 
and, and the town manager to get things done right the first time because we can't afford not being reimbursed. I don't care if it's a million well, bucks or half is, a million bucks. This is the way I look on projects. The Board of Education, you could sit there and, and, and say that they're in charge of certain things, but the answer is no. When projects are going on, it's at the town's level, not the Board of Education level. So when we build a new school or we're redoing things, the committee's put in place, and they're not... You, Again, the Board of Education doesn't okay who's on the committee. That's all done by the town council. That's done by the town right. council. Okay, so the ones that should be asking questions right now of where things are is the town council. So the town council should be getting that information. And whether or not the, the school board wants to do anything with our, uh, um, our town finance officer, um, I would tell them, tough, because right now, the town's ahead of the project, not the school board. Right. The buildings, well, well, the buildings the, yeah. until they're completely constructed, are not turned over. They're, they are officially turned over to the Board of Education and their responsibility after the fact, yeah. not, not, but, not before. But the paperwork that is involved comes from the superintendent. I get that. But, but again, you are right in one spot here. Um, and I think we all learned a little bit of lesson with the health, um, uh, what, what do you call it, the health fund, okay? Yeah. Our finance director um, has been diligent on getting the paperwork for all these schools and stuff. But to be honest with you, that was the committee's area to make sure all that stuff was in. And I remember when I was finance chairman, um, he was they, they hired somebody with him going through this whole, all the stuff on the school, the barrel school, and trying to get all the paperwork. And the problem was the committee that was there didn't keep things no. right. No, and stuff was all over the place. So I, I remember walking into a room and where he was showing me where he was on things to get things into the state to get reimbursed, and we're still not fully reimbursed. No, we we're, we're lacking four point one million dollars. Yeah. And according to Christian the other night at our board of finance, he's struggling to get um, all of it back. And right now. Because they found some stuff in Kramer and he'd gone through. Yeah, you're right. His office or outside of his office was nothing but boxes. Yeah, the state was dragging their feet for a year with this pandemic, using that as an excuse. But all this paperwork should have been done way before the pandemic. And well, when I left, Chuck, just to be honest, when I left, my understanding was they were pretty close of having everything done of what they've asked for through Christian because um, I was in that room. Yeah. And I, you know, I, I'm going to say I was led to believe that they were pretty close of getting all that in there. But after I left, my understanding is that there was additional paperwork that the state was asking for. I, I, I can confirm, Tom, that current uh, Board of Ed member, uh, Mark Doyle, and a couple of the former Board of Ed members who were involved on that time on the board during that construction period were asked, to, asked by our finance director, where are the, where is the paperwork? And it was Mark who said, hey, you might want to check the basement of Kramer. Who knows? And that's where they found some of this stuff. That's the part that gets me. <laughs> it's the who knows. That gets me, too. If you've a got taxpayer. a committee together, you should be having a committee making sure where the paperwork. Who, who yeah. in the world was doing that? Who was in charge? Right. Okay? That's a lot of money that when you guys, most taxpayers don't know this. When we sit there and tell you that we have so much money in funds, fund balances, they're counting that state money. Yes. That money is already counted that we actually on paper have it, but we don't have it. But we don't have it. You're right. Okay, so our numbers, you know, when I, when I read Ernie's thing in the paper last night that he's frustrated because he says fund balances aren't where they're supposed to be. Um, they really are not anywhere where they're supposed to be. On, on paper they are, right. but the cash is not there. On paper, we're somewhere around 10 11%. And that's what's being submitted to these bond agencies. Whether they investigate it and go one step further and say, "Is where are this money? Is it in the state? Did you get your money?" It, your fund like, balances, to be quite honest with you, should be higher than that right now. With be, all the money that they have received from the federal government and state government from this COVID relief, almost every town has boosted up their fund balances. All, we we did. All flush. We, we, okay. In our last meeting, we boosted it up two million dollars. Um, which was in excess of the health fund because the school board came in. The school uh, board came in uh, way under budget. They had I can't remember. It was one point something million one point, dollars. One point five million excess yeah, that they and returned. And then they put another four hundred 
thousand into the health fund because they didn't spend what they had to spend, and that went back in. Those are yeah. good things. No, but, but that built up. That was also put into the fund, uh, the fund balance. But what concerns me also, Tom, is going forward. We got this huge school project going on. Who's going to manage? And who's competent enough to do the paperwork so that we don't get into the same hole? They really That's a good should, question. They should, they should look into a third-party construction manager guy. Let him be in charge of all of it because it's in pure incompetence so right, for not so, having it done yeah. the first time. So what's, yeah. happening, what's happening is the committee is being the construction manager. Correct. Yes. Right? Yep. And that had that's not worked in the Barrow School because look where we are. How many years are we waiting for our Six money? Six years now. It is up to the company that you hired to do that. It might cost you a little bit of money to do it. I've heard they've gone to a but, third party and the best they can but, come up with is $3 million yeah. reimbursement. But in the long run, you get your reimbursements in faster, which then if you invest them, right. you're going to be making most of your money back. Um, I, I'm with, can on you big projects, you cannot have your committee of a town of a bunch of politicians and local people being your, um, I, I forgot, it's it's a building contractor manager. Construction yeah. manager. Yeah, you you can't, you, yeah. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. I mean, just look at the community center. That's gotten out of hand. We yeah. don't know how much they've overspent, over budget. Well, the, the numbers are being hidden from us. Well, I don't think they're being honest Yes, with they you. are. They're, no, they're no, I said hit. I don't think they're oh. being honest. So. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm <laughs> agreeing with you. Chuck. A little louder, Tom. This is Chuck you're talking too to. Often. <laughs> yeah. No, I, and again, I'm worried about the high school because here's the amount, amount of money that they said. Now, we're hearing, now we're not hearing it from anybody that's on like, Tom or the town manager or, any, or Lynn from the Board of Ed that there's issues at this particular point. What's going to happen is a year or two from now, well, things happened, and they're going to blame it all on the COVID. It's going to it's going to okay. drag. This project and is going to drag. The price the price is going to go up every year. Yeah. Okay, it goes up um, every year. I, again, I'm just going to say this. This is one of the reasons why some of us, and I know there's at least two in this room, um, for to have that school be built where the football and baseball fields are, because you could have probably had this school completed by now. Okay, and then tear down the old school. Exactly. And I'll guarantee you it would have been cheaper. Oh, yeah. Definitely, what doing it would have now. been definitely less expensive. But I don't cry. I'm not going to cry over spilled milk time. It's well, done. It's, it's done. You can't, you can't but get let's get it move. done right this time, and let's get the paperwork organized right. Let's not frustrate the taxpayers who have supported these projects, right? But, you know, if it's, a, if it's the same kind of um, incompetency that's going to take care of this situation as the Barrels one, we're in for a long ride. I mean, with the interest rates are what they are, but I, I still predict with the interest on, interest uh, on a $4 rates million. Interest rates are going to be going up. No, I'm talking about the interest of beer and pay. If we had this $4 million put into some fund, some bond, we could have earned some money over this last six years, but we're we're just letting it sit sit there not no, the bearing states, any the interest. No, the state's earning the interest on exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. Because they're yeah. keeping it. Yeah. yeah, I don't blame them. And I don't blame them that if you don't have your paperwork right, that's your, that's your fault. Right. Well, okay? Two things, Tom. One, I'm on an ad hoc committee got volunteered, uh, everybody else stepped forward, backwards. But anyhow, it was to replace the tanks uh, at four elementary schools and a new roof on North Wyndham. I was told originally it should last six months. We're now going into next year because, number one, the school didn't send the proper paperwork into the um, state. That delayed it. Then they said, well, it's COVID. You know, so you know, I'm tired here's of people another, blaming everything on COVID. I know. Here's <laughs> here's another thing. The Board of Ed is getting 11, somewhere 10, 11 million dollars, okay? I don't think there's anybody in the school side that knows how to spend the money properly. Oh, no, they do. I, 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 I'm sorry. You said properly. I screwed up. You're right. <laughs> no, you're right. Hey, in my years, we knew how to spend it. Well, I know you did. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> See the expansion of my house? No. <laughs> I'm only kidding. Please, I'm only kidding. Yeah, right. <laughs> before, before I get too far, I just want to sit there and say, you know, I got my email from Susan Johnson reminding me, too, that uh, she sends us out to all the taxpayers here, voters in town, celebrating National Women's Equality Day. So... You, you Wait, said all the taxpayers in town get that? I didn't get an email from Susan Johnson. Yeah, I'm sure you anything. do, unless you're not on her. Um, I'm know, not on the email. I'm email. Not on her That's email. I just, I'm just, I just want to She's say out there, thing. congratulations. It's your day there. I thought it was it's National Dog Day. That's for you. No, it's National Dog Day. It is National Dog Day. It's for you. 
I don't have a dog, so, so I, I don't have. So a let's dog go back either. to a statement you made that you know about Ernie being frustrated. I mean, that was quite the article. It was. I You're, was. Um, I was. I was at a place last night, and somebody came up to me. Actually, yelled down to me, and said to me, "Did you see the article from Ernie?" I said, "No." And he said, "You got to read it." Now, this again was another Democrat that said this to me. It was a good article. Frustrated with the town manager. Frustrated with Tom. I'm um, well, the you know, so I got home last night and I read the article and, you know, I, I get it. Yeah, in politics, you get burned out. There's no, and Ernie's been in for a while, just like, you know, myself and other, but you got to get out and step back for a little bit. If you get back in, you want to charge your batteries up a little bit, but it does get frustrating because um, there's a number of people in this town that just want to spend money and it doesn't matter what, it, what the cost is. Yeah. They just want to spend money. Yes. Okay. And it's on pro. Don't get me wrong. There's projects that are around, um, but they they really don't care what the ticket price is. That's the problem. Okay. I, I listen. I, I've known Ernie for years, for years and years and years. Worked very close with him on all his campaigns, where he was running for mayor and he was successful a few times and running for council. I I think I know Ernie the person, and everyone in this room will, will agree on one thing that he's probably the most generous and kind guy to this community. Him and his wife, they they, they exactly. really are. Um, he's one of many volunteers in this community that keeps it going. But I, I happened to call him yesterday. I don't know before I, I before I got home. I was calling him about just some. Something foolish, you know, joking around with him. And he, he said, Ken, is that all you have to say to me? And I said, yes. He goes, well, you didn't read the paper yet. And I said, Ernie, what, what did you do? And he <laughs> what said, what did you do? Because <laughs> it, it was like that during the campaign, you know. He was like, yeah. what, do you, what did you say, Ernie? Because what, what? he's like a, he's like a, he does never want to say anything out of character. And he says, well, he said, I'll wait till you get home and read it and tell me what you think. So I went home, I read the paper, and I said, I, my text to so many of my friends was, he, I'm glad you got off your chest, Ernie. You're, you're, you're tired of the town manager being the 10th player, right? You're tired of the town manager just running the ship and not working Look, for the it's council. Not, He's it's tired not of something it. I haven't heard from other people on the town council that have quietly said to me and other people that they believe the town manager is too political. Very political. Okay? He's very political. Um, so, you know, there is something there on that end of it. But again, you know, um, that... Is the town council's fault because, um, look, he works you went them. to a town manager, former government, to try to get the politics out of that area, yeah. right? Um, so if your town manager, whether it's this one or another one, gets too involved in politics in the town, it's up to the town council to stop that. And I haven't seen anything. If that's going on, I haven't heard or anything that anybody's putting their foot down on, on some of these things. Yeah, I mean, well, you know? Ernie, Ernie last night at our... At our uh, um, because I'm not actively involved in, in in the bottom line as much as I was, but he I went to the meeting last night, and Ernie, uh, you know, spoke of the last campaign and the the worrying that our town manager had. What if Ernie wins? What's going to happen? What about his job? What's you know, uh, things going to flip? Ernie made those statements, not me. Yeah. And I said, Ernie. I don't know why he was worrying about that, because you as the mayor, you, you you work with everybody and you work with everyone well with the best interests of the community, plus. You're, like I've always said before, the board is the board. They have the control no matter what happens. And I said, and, and, and unlike in the past, now it's ruled by social media what gets said and done. Because um, back in the day, you know, you could be the mayor of, of the minority party up there, and you only had so much of a, of, of the power of the, of the microphone, if you will. But uh, right now, that's, that's Ernie's feelings. He, he was, like, so upset last night. He was so not himself. And um, it well, that was Tuesday night, right? Yeah, Tuesday night. Yeah. Well, what I, I what I gonna again, I'm gonna, night. I'll give you what I got out of the article was that he's been elected by people to represent people in the town of Wyndham. Um, I got that he he can go to the town manager and try to talk to him, but he feels there's no air for him because the town manager knows that they don't have the muscle to push something, so they just pushed him aside. That's what I got out of the no, article, that, that, and he's that, tired, that's of, good. It. Well, that's like, good. And he's person, tired of it. That's good. Another person that's in the same category. Whether it's Tony, true or not, that's that's where he is. Well, Tony that's how he feels. He's the same way. He's yeah. burnt out. He's done. He says, every time I fight something... I'm, I'm outshadowed. I'm outvoted. I'm, I'm yeah, told. Chuck, that's going to happen it's no matter happen, what town you're in because there is a political time. party that's going to be in yeah, control. Yeah, but, but, you know, but so never mind Tony and never mind Ernie, but the, how many calls have I been that we've received on this show alone with people who feel when they go to the town disenfranchised. meetings, they they're do. disenfranchised. Yeah. And that's not that's not healthy. That's, no. po that's And I don't care about politics. If, if, 
if you're not listening to the community when they're coming in and taking them seriously and just moving on to the next thing and uh, they're not connected to to a town committee that has the control that's pretty sad and and, and upsetting i know you know when i was the re the republican chairman of the board of ed and it was just like whatever i said at those little meetings with, with when they had the little executive uh you know let's bring the board guy this guy and that guy in and they, whatever i had to say didn't really matter because i didn't have a d next to my name but and you, that's sad yeah, yeah but you know something you also there was a difference on your school board versus other boards in town most of the time your school boards um and i'm going to go back to sue collins and all of them because you were on with them yeah, you were chairman yeah. with them you yeah. were all oh, susan was chairman at times um you guys always had this feeling and and, and a, once you were elected there was no D, there was no R. No, you guys no. were trying to work for the best of the of the kids. Whether or not we on the station agreed with you on <laughs> you these did shows. It. You did it. You dug okay. a hole for me. Okay. Yeah. You, you know, I'm getting that, you back now. That, that's different. <laughs> but but the other boards, um, you know, I've sat on town councils before. Um, and there's always been a feeling that whoever's controlling that board, that's the way we're pushing. And who cares about what this side really wants. And I think that um, that's really um, is the probably the crutch of the problems not only here but in the state level too. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I will uh, say I will say the one thing that I've always been glad upon with, with me and my name when I was on the board of finance, I didn't play that game. I always tried to include what party, whether it was a Green Party or Republicans that were sitting there or bottom line that were on a committee. I even gave them a committee and chairmanship assignments you, you on different assignment. things because my feeling was once you were elected that other piece should go by the wayside that, and we should all be working what's better you know better for the town tom that's and the that's way, the way it should I, that's be. the way i operate okay. and but I, but and, your and town board, council hasn't been that way i've no, seen it has no. not been that way for a long time no now, i will say the board of finance is is um operates the way you you just described um i can, i'm not a person as you know that's going to be quiet and stuffed in the corner they allow me my two cents whether I, they get voted out or not they allow me my two cents they also the chairman will come to me and say this is what's going to happen tonight uh we, i just want to make you aware so you can think about right. it now that's fair i, I I leave. Well, that's all you I want. Leave my is to be fair. I leave my my. I, I still think conservative, but I leave my politics at the door. I'm now elected to represent the town and the people, the taxpayers, uh, and I got to work with making sure the government works well and the towns yep. and then the people aren't cheated. Yeah, yeah not would, cheated, I, but. So I don't want to cheat you guys out okay. of anything, but we're going to have to go to break and we'll be back because I want to talk about the Green Party's candidate when we All the candidates. <laughs> back to the Republic Forum. I'm Tom. We got Chuck here and the Honorable Voice of Wyndham. Not the yes. Honorable, the Voice of the Wyndham. This voice. is it. It doesn't get any better than this, folks. This is when the ratings go through the roof. <laughs> I, I don't know where in the world we ever came up with that. Wait a minute. We didn't come up with that name. He did. Oh, he my, did. my own ego did. Are you kidding me? Okay. Come on, Tom. And, well, and, speaking and, of egos... And Tom, you got two Republicans here tonight. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> One, I, I, two. I, no, no, no. I know Ken is. I'm not sure about you yet. <laughs> I think you teeter on that line. <laughs> <laughs> but speaking of Eagles, my God, James Flores must be really singing in the rain today. Well, it's sunshine out, I guess, singing in the sunshine. <laughs> he, he's on top of the ticket for the Green Party. What a wonderful person to put on top of a ticket. Well, I mean, he's always, he's that, always been out there for the people. Oh, let me. T <laughs> no, don't stop. He's been out there for, for the people. For certain I mean, people. I, I, read yes. his, I read his thing. He said he's not for millionaires. He's for the for the common folks. Um, common folks. And he's he's fighting the good. I say justice for James. He's still fighting the court situation. But as the well, candidate right, for mayor, I'm, I'll start this off right now by saying, I am hoping and I am asking uh, for the three candidates to do a public debate, not a Zoom debate. We can all wear a mask. If you don't want people in without vaccines, tell them to stay home. We're, if you're vaccinated, put on your mask. Let's go six feet apart. I'm asking for a minimum of three debates, public debates. That's up to the candidates and their crews to, to organize. But that would be one hell of a night. If we charge $20 a ticket, we'd oh, make we, a fortune. Oh, we'd make a fortune <laughs> on that, really. Because I think they'd all come to it, see it's what James hey, is going to do. And from what my, I understand, it's going to be all issue-oriented, Tom. Well, my friend. 
Yeah, I, I know what my friend says. You're, you're, Don't, you're, you can your understand brother. my brother. Understand, Tom, my brother. Why, why, he was your brother. I remember He's being on the brother. board of finance no, and calling no. you Tom White was his brother. He is, Every he is time my brother. I, I, okay. He talked. Oh, you're my brother, Tom. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, just to get back down to earth here a little bit, um, I, I woke up this morning to a text from another union person that I know in town um, that usually votes um, for the Working Families Party and stuff. And the, and the text that came to me was, I'm hearing a rumor that James um, got the Green Party endorsement and that they're going to be working for him to get the Working Families endorsement. And, um, and, and the person said to me, Can, will that happen? Because I'm a union guy. And you, you guys always ask us to support people on that line. I, I can't do that, Tom. Okay? I, I hope to God my, the Working Families Party from the union side are smarter than the Green Party. They, I hope um, so, And too. the reason why I'm saying that, I think the Green Party hurt themselves. They um, shot themselves in the foot. By just doing what they did. Um, you know, they have to get independence. Democrats, never mind if some Republicans come over, which usually probably doesn't, but some Democrats and Repu um, independents and unaffiliates to come over and vote for them. I, I don't think that there's a major cry out there that people will be behind Mr. Flores. You put somebody in that spot, it's usually to try to help win the seat and carry other people into it. That's true. true. How, James, how in the world did they thought, and I, I truly believe they only put him in there because, one, nobody wanted to run except for yeah. him, okay? But I, I would say this to any party. You don't put up somebody um, that is going to make a mockery out of the system completely. Mm. And that's what this guy is going to do. Well, you yeah. you got to figure, you gotta figure this, the strategy, too, being, you know, if you're looking They're at They're better again, off not running anybody uh, well, and, and, and running for their seats. You, you, what I'm getting at is if you just take a step back and... and and you think about it for a minute. You got a, a very you're gonna have a, no matter what you got a strong Democrat. I mean, he's a, the advantage is there already. Oh yeah. However, as you know, and the numbers prove it, he is not very well liked out in the Wyndhams. He is yep. just not yep. the villages. For, I don't know why. All I know is in Willimantic, he'll do he'll harvest his votes. He'll do very well. In Wyndham, he's going to have a tougher time. Oh, the Wyndhams. Now, it's, wait, look, we, the Wyndhams. It's it, the best known for for that is out there. Can you live down? Uh, he's a flip flopper. Yeah, I, and, and that's why I, people. I'm not going to get into yeah. it. That's I, why people don't. All, I, all I'm saying is he's got his he's got his supporters out here in Willimantic, and out in the villages, it's going to be a little more tricky for him. So if James does whatever he does, let's say he pulls 500 votes, 400 votes, that's four or 500 votes that certainly aren't going to go to Tom. They're going to take from Tom because those folks who are voting for James are not voting for. Uh, Mr. DeSel I can't even say his last name. Disonier. No, I do agree with you I, so, on there. They, they so wouldn't if, vote. If, if he yeah. pulls, if if it could be a closer race than you think. If if Mike does his work in the Windhams and gets his a stronger foothold out there, and then gets his butt out here in Willimantic and introduces himself and explain himself again, communicate. Um, I think I, I I met him years ago. And I, I'm not. I'll be honest with Chuck. I mean, he knew I was very nervous about this guy because he would go off and he, he'd scream and go yep. on these rants. Yeah. But you know, I when I, uh, you know, have more. He won't be able to hold back. Well, you he may, may not. He'll you, start I'll, off. I'll guarantee I'll you that you, he'll start he was, off halfway decent. But it won't take long if if anybody is smart that's running against him. They know how to pull his trigger. Well, I, I, I will never they, be they, able to hold Tom, it. They, they, if they, if I, the leading candidate is Tom DeVivo, correct? Let's say let's automatic, automatically give him the edge. It's not going to take. I've seen Tom DeVivo flip out multiple times, a couple times on me, out of nothing to do with politics. I'd like to see him flip out when you have a guy like James egging him on, and then Mike pours on the gasoline. But I don't think Mike is into it for that reason. I, I think he's he's really working towards you know just a more conservative. Look, what form I of what I know here. of Mike, it's not a lot, but I know his family. Um, Mike's not running in this thing to lose. Okay, no. so I get that part. Um, Mr. Flores, I'm pretty sure knows that he can't win. Yeah. Um, this isn't uh, running the Green Party, running Gene Dismay. Gene has a good name in town, very smart person. Uh, you might not agree with her politics, but she has the heart in, in Wyndham. Yes. Okay, um, you can't say that about the other guy. The other guy's in it for just certain reasons. Okay, and... Um, I, that's the part that really there. There's I had 
I have a lot of respect for some of the people that are on the Green Party. I know some of them. Perth, I just shaking my head here. Um, they must have been a lot of teetotalers last night with extra stuff in their tea to make that vote last night. I really, yeah. I really don't yeah. understand. My, my knowledge, don't is understand. The, my knowledge is Dagmar Noel really, really pushed for him to. Uh, she could, again, Dagmar she could really hurt pushed. herself because yeah. having somebody like that on there, and if they go off and say the wrong things, which yeah. I believe James will at some he point. He definitely will. Okay? Because um, I've never seen anybody able to control him. Now, the one person that I always thought did control him never could. I, that just proven the last couple of years was Dennis. Yeah. Okay? Oh, well, wait a minute. No, you know? come on now. Leave Dennis that's out my, of that. But I'm just... That's, that's, I'm just that's it's the father of James, opinion. I was told. I, I went yeah, to meetings and he was called his but father. But I want to back up a minute. I, I've known Mike for a long time now. And I agree with you. The first several years, he he would go off. He a the, he's a different person. He went through some health problems. He went through some different problems in his past year and a half. Yeah. He's changed. Well, I don't disagree with that. I think Mike... Mike is going to be a serious candidate for yes. Tom. I think you're exact. You know, I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't think about it that way. Some of the Democratic calls that I got today was, "What are these people thinking about on the Green Party?" They just gave us the election, okay, because of what they did. And to be honest with you, um, you know, look, the votes that go there won't ever go to a Republican. No, no. But no. this is what I'm trying to say yes. is that I don't think James can stay out of the limelight running for mayor. Well, and he's going to do something stupid. Let me give you some inside okay. baseball on the greens. A couple things, Tom. So initially, we, you know, we, when I say we, it's Mark. Mark was getting emails because they wanted to work together, you know, with all, all, all of us as minority <coughs> parties. And, and the, the initial thought was, well, let's not run anybody, you know, or because they, they, their laws don't allow them to endorse another person, unlike ours. And so they didn't want to have anybody running, so that would be a a, a, a two man race, I guess, or two person race. Um, so that that was part of their equation. W what are they going to do with that? And then again, the James thing came up, you know. And I also know that one of their other candidates, you know, made it made it known to us already that he he doesn't want to be on the ticket now for the Greens because James is on it. And but in either, uh, I would, in, in either, if that was me. I would have bounced off. In either, last in either, night. In either yeah, case, yeah. I still believe I would never that, be on. I don't on. care if it's three, no. four hundred votes. That yeah. could be the difference Look, between a victory for Tom and a win yeah. for Mike. I was yeah. I was on some um, some teams, Democratic teams, that I didn't really care for the person that was at the top of the ticket, and everybody knows I was not a Walter Polakevich fan. Okay, right. um, but I, I at least knew he had the smarts and the yeah. ability to do the job. I just didn't like his politics. Right. Okay, um, I, I got no problem with people like. But a James Flores sitting at the top of a ticket? Now, you want to run him for a bottom low seat somewhere? Um, the Democrats did that, too. Um, you know, he'll, he'll get upset at the Green Party at some point. Somebody will say something, and he'll bounce off of them, too. Yeah. Okay? James is for James. Yeah, oh, definitely. I don't care what anybody says. James is he for James. He likes to hear himself talk. Okay? When he gets involved in things, um, it's it's... It's not just that thing. It's always about him yeah. and, and doing what he did and everything else. And, I, and look, I don't think he should have been arrested. I've said that before. Um, I haven't seen everything, but I don't think he should have been arrested for being at the town hall and stuff. You get him out, and that's where it is, okay? Yeah. Well, um, because well. you and I could be doing the same thing that he did. So I'll back him up 100% on that piece of it. it it's... The way people, when you're in politics and you see stuff, I can see getting an activist. I have no problem with an activist um, that has some, um, uh, I guess, some future of way of running a party to somewhere. Where, what's James going to do for the Green Party? What's Nothing. James going to do? The bigger question is, what in the world did the Green Party think that he could do for this town? That that and, and there's even, a lot of smart people on that Green Party. But, there are, but but you know, yeah. Seth, Tom, this this, 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 this continues to prove that what's going on with local politics in the local town. Like you, you told me the Democrats had a hard time filling seats. We certainly did. The Republicans certainly sure did. did. So did the Greens, and that and they have a person like Jean Dismay, like her, love her, hate her. She's an intelligent person. She's had the job before. She she filled a seat. I think it's for the Board of Finance. She had no interest, desire. Or energy left because she is like Ernie, is completely frustrated, and that's what they're doing. That's and if that's the victory, that's the victory dance in November for them. 
have at it. You know, take the seats now. No one's going to complain. Do what you're going to do. Yeah. But Look, this I, is what I mean. This is you know the, the the people who've been around yourself, myself. We we've, we've been involved in politics over 30 years, and you, you bang your head. I was fortunate because I worked with a board that was a, a split, and there was not like you said there was not one time that we couldn't come to an agreement and work out on the differences in, in private. So that when we go forward, we're a united board for the kids of this town. Right. Yeah. And that's what needs to happen. And it's not happening in the town hall. You know it, and no, I know no, it. It's, it's not going to happen. When, it's, when, it's, I, get, when it, I was it, on the board of finance, because I'm a Democrat, when they were going to go spending money left and right and doing certain things, I, look, the calls would come to me by them. The ones that voted to go out and spend the money, yeah. Tom, you got to stop this. Tom, you got to do this. You know, I'm the Democrat. I'm, cons- I'm, I'm looked at as the moderate conservative guy, so right. it won't get past Tom and his board. That's always bothered me. And that's one of the pieces that I got burned out with mm-hmm. the local politics with people is because you're, you know, you're supposed to be on the town council doing what is best for the town. And sometimes exactly. you've got to hold your foot and say you can't spend the money. But the, none of them could do that. Yeah. Okay? They let it go to the next level because, well, I want to be seen as the person that supported this uh, building of this building, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, not doing the right thing. Same thing when we were, when I was board of finance chairman and, and stood up against the school board for doing what they're doing with this school at this point. Not that I was against redoing the school. Yeah. I was for a new school because it made 100%, no sense 100% to spend the amount of money. Now, mm-hmm. I had people from the town council calling me up saying, good for you, Tom, it's the right thing. Not one of them on the Democratic side would get up and say anything. and support against exactly. what the school board yeah. wants because it's I, I, I'm not going to go against this guy. He holds too much weight on politics, on this and this. No, I mean, you run for an election. Do what you think is supposed to be best, not what some other guy's telling you. I don't care what party right. you're in. I mean, yeah, that's what, that's what I try to do. I do not bring my politics into it. I bring my conservative into it. And and the same thing, like the last time we voted for the budget to half a mil, I mean uh, half a percent or whatever it was, I was against it because the school came in over budget, uh, under budget, way under budget. The town was flush with money. Why are we giving them money? You know what? Yeah. I One guess that's a good... Was, I'll, I'll I'm, you glad a... You're, I'm glad you're here because <laughs> um, Jeff and I have brought this up a couple of times. Um, why didn't anybody on the Board of Finance, when they found out how much money they were getting in for revenue on used cars, because used cars jumped way up, um, how much money you were starting to get in for pilot program? How much more money you were getting for COVID? Why didn't I hear anybody from the Board of Finance say, wait a minute, before we send the tax bills out, shouldn't we be re-looking at this and saying we got more money and say we're going to take some of this money and offset the taxes now because we got more than what we planned? Well, I didn't hear anybody. Yeah, but, uh, no, well, I, I made the statement when I was voting against the increase, that they're getting a lot of money. Why are we giving them anything? One of the reasons why it was given to the school, we want to raise the minimum balance because someday down the road... Yeah, I hate that. Yeah, I knew someday that's down the road. Was. You know, and, and that was why they got it. And I says, well, why are you giving it to town? Well, we're just trying to be... Equal. See, now, th- this is the part. Now, I don't, and again, I don't know if it's the press. Okay, because the press in our town has gone down. There's oh, no yeah, doubt yeah, about yeah. it. Oh, there's no, there's no okay? reporting there's, there's anymore. No press. But you have a phone. You can call any reporter up. You can call the radio stations up, and, and you're, you're an elected official, and sit there and say, do you know that we got one point something more million dollars in um, because of Pilot? Um, we got another million dollars over here. Um, and, you know, before tax bills go out, the people didn't know that we, and we didn't know they were getting this much revenue, but now we are, and we should have a push to lower the taxes before they go out the door, okay? Um, that's the, You guys got soapboxes. People got to learn, no matter well, if you're the mayor or down you, below. You, yeah. That's what I said last week, Got to use right? the soapbox. I told that to any minority candidate who wins a seat. You may not get done what you want done, but use the power of your seat. Speak up. You know, I'm still sitting back here. And I'm waiting. We've got plenty of time, Tom, for, for what I asked you about. When you, I know you talked to your sister and others. It's time to implement a tax credit to put on my bill for January. Yeah. And yeah. get it. It costs you nothing. It's a, it's a mathematical formula. You put it on there. It'll, it'll populate on everyone's bill. 
This is no labor involved it, in this. Well, let's let's did, you know. Did, I, I wonder how much time we got because I want to get got six, six minutes. minutes. I want to talk about the event that's coming up Saturday. The Shibu okay, All Stars. Okay, the Shibu All Stars, and you know, I'm hoping that people go to this. All right, but I want I want to talk about that a little bit because you got Mansfield and a couple other towns around us that have put the mask mandate in. Okay, I know of at least four to five people in this town within the past three days have um, and vaccine. They all got their vac- have gotten this COVID now. Okay, um, I don't know why this town council hasn't um, either pushed or forced the town manager to put the mask mandate in. Wait and see what happens a week or so after this concert, okay? Mm-hmm. Because you're going to have hopefully at least a thousand or two thousand people here. All of them not six feet apart. They're going to be together. I've been to these things. I, I have never missed one. Okay, um, they're all going to be there. And this town isn't taking that. You got East Hartford, Hartford, all these other towns that are coming up and forcing people just to walk into a restaurant or a store wearing the mask right now. We haven't done nothing. We have a major concert coming up, and we're not afraid of it. You got concerts. Being we're not canceled. afraid of it. You got concert. Like I know the Eagles are playing up at TD Garden this week, this this Friday, and you're mandated to wear a mask up there already. Um, I deal with four colleges, and as of this morning, they've all changed the dining halls again from full inside dining on China to. 50 50 take, uh, take out. Well, our colleges, or, everybody's got to wear yeah. the mask. Well, and, you know, it, it, and, well, they, and they've already got four cases at a local one that I know about. I don't think this is a local issue. The governor is the one that threw this mess into well, all the I, towns. I get it. But, but at the same time, he's left it up because of the political stuff that he had going on in the beginning to leave it up to the towns. Yeah. Okay? So he's left it up to the towns. All I'm saying here is we have a mass mandate in Mansfield. The numbers maybe have stayed somewhat equal, but they're up, okay? Um, there's no way that three or four people that I know of, there's got to be more in this town that have gotten it. The numbers just haven't squeaked in. Mm. And there, I haven't heard one politician come out in the forefront and ask the question about what we should be doing because we got a major concert coming down. We could have a major breakout. Okay? True. Because of this. Yeah. Now, I'm a guy that knows that I, it'll be worse if it was in, in a you know, in, in, in in an enclosed yeah. area. We're outside, but you're going to have people jumping around, singing, drinking beer, everything yeah. else underneath the sun. And if you paid enough money, this was a real kicker to me. If you paid enough money, you get underneath the tent and you are allowed to leave. But if you only paid the 25 bucks to come in... You got to sit inside all day. You're not allowed to leave. Where, where in the heck is that coming from? Either you're not allowed to leave, or you, or you stay inside. Right. Okay. Um, I don't know how this is going to happen, or whether I pray to God that we walk out, the numbers stay the same, because I'm tired of the mask myself. Yeah. But I, don't like I run a bingo, and I put it back in place because I've been waiting for the town to make the decision. But because of what I've seen going around, I put it back in place starting today that people have to wear their mask, okay? Because it's worrisome. And I've only got, you know, you got 100 people to come to a bingo, not 1,000 coming to a concert. And I just think that people um, should be a little bit smart about this. And, and if we're all on the side of safety, then they should have put the mask requirement while people are all well, Tom, walking around Cal- at least there. That's just my opinion. Uh, Ca- California <laughs> is a hotbed, right? I went to San Diego. In the hotel and anywhere I went, they said, if you're vaccinated, no mask required. Very few people had masks. We had the wedding. Nobody wore a mask. That's because you're all Republicans there. I don't know. You know. Wait a minute, California? Well, no, nah, that can't be. It's going to be Republican <laughs> soon. Did you see that race? You see that governor's race, Tom? Yeah. It's happening. Yeah, it's it, the happening. turns. Ha- they lost so but much I just, business. I just to that, know, that look, state. I, I'm just in I that spot. I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm really worried about it. It's, it's something and, to be concerned and about. And I, sure. and I, and you have a very liberal, Democratic base that runs our town, and all of them kept pushing the mask, kept pushing this, kept pushing that. They're all shying away of any of them coming out in public. And saying this is wrong, they so, should be having a mass mandate for this. It's a okay? election day. There's a well, time. I think they're worried about people won't buy tickets and come. 
If oh, you do yeah, that, yeah. I think it's all about that too. I, I really do. I'm not yeah. saying the promoters of it because that's not their piece. No. no. This is the town's people's yeah. piece. Yeah. That are running it. Yeah. Hey, I, before I you close out, Tom, I, again, I, I want, again, uh, we started the show by asking the community just to take a minute to reflect on what happened in Kabul today. Yes. With the loss of uh, the servicemen and women. And um, and just so what we do is talking about petty politics here is nothing to pay, compared to the seriousness of what's happening yeah. out there. And, I, and I let's just exactly pray, pray that it's not any more than this. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I hope not. Uh, you, you're right. I don't care what side of the aisle, whether no, you think that you should have pulled it out. That doesn't matter right now. No. You know, the safety, so. the safety of our, our people and those um, people in Afghanistan that helped us. Yeah, I mean, their lives are really at stake. Yeah, uh, but but again, I mean, I, I can still remember Vietnam when we were pulling out Several and stuff I, happens. I was, it never works out the best way for anybody. Um, just pray for everybody. Yeah, but hey, more. people, have a good weekend. Listen, yes. I in no way is saying that you shouldn't go to the Shabu thing. <laughs> just be careful, please. Yes. Um, it, if you're it, concerned, wear, the mask, wear a mask. You, wear, the, wear the mask, yeah. okay? Um, I hope that thing turns out good. I hope the weather actually turns out good for it because it looks, it's always a good like event. And yeah. David and Bruce and all these guys that do this, I mean, they do it for the goodness of their heart to raise money for different charities in that group. So I, I hope the thing works out good for them. I'm just hoping that after the event that we don't have a serious breakout so exactly. keep safe good night god bless good night thank you